Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back to Solid Gold. It's time for an update on the progress of my 90 gallon aquarium in my living room. Last week I brought you along to Poseidon Aquarium Store in Daytona Beach to show you my visit there, show you all the fish that they have, and pick out an aquarium and all the supplies that I would need for it. And I really teased you guys because I did not tell you what new fish are going in this aquarium. All you know so far is it's not goldfish. I'm going to bring you along on the entire process of setting this tank up from start to finish and at the very end I will show you guys what fish I'm getting and I think you're gonna love it. This week I'm gonna show you guys all the more decorative elements that I'm adding to the tank like substrate, background, decorations, and based on the things that I'm adding to the tank you'll probably be able to guess or at least try to start guessing what kind of fish it is that I'm putting in there. So let's see if you can figure it out. This is the fake rock background for the aquarium. It comes with these clips. They kind of open and close and you're supposed to put those at the top. First thing I did even before adding water to the aquarium was putting the flexible fake rock background in the tank. It was a little awkward to maneuver because the background is so large and there is that middle brace at the top of the aquarium which makes it hard to fit things in there but the background is so flexible that once I you know flexed it a certain way it just kind of like popped into place. This background I got from Poseidon Aquarium when I was there picking up my tank but you can also buy them online. I'll put an Amazon link in the description section below to this exact same background. They're very cost effective for how nice they look. I have to admit I was really skeptical about these clips but they actually work great. All right let's open this canister filter See if I can figure it out. Excuse me, Graham. I chose to go with the Aquatop CF500 UV canister filter, and I showed this filter in my last video, and some people said, eh, that's not the best filter. I kind of agree and disagree. Now, would I have preferred an Eheim or a Fluval? Yeah, probably. But being that this aquarium setup was already beginning to cost me a lot of money, I decided to go with a canister filter that I thought would be a little cheaper and still do a good job. I don't think this Aquatop filter is a bad filter at all. It has five separate media trays that you can customize with different filter media. It came with a coarse sponge for the bottom, fine sponges for each tray, and a bag of ceramic rings for biological filtration, and it also came with a bag of activated carbon for chemical filtration. I don't use carbon in any of my filters, so honestly, I just threw it away. <laughs> I feel it's mostly useless since it gets filled up fairly quickly and you have to replace it very often to avoid it getting so full that it begins leaching contaminants back into the aquarium that it has already previously removed from the aquarium. There's really no need for carbon in a filter in my opinion and I honestly think it's just one of those things that filter manufacturers want you to keep buying so you keep giving them money even after you've originally bought their filter. So after giving all the filter parts a good rinse I put it back together and assembled the hoses intake tube and spray bar. Later on I'll be adding cycled filter media from one of my established tanks to this canister filter but for now I'm just doing a test to make sure everything works properly and is positioned where I want it in the aquarium. I ran into a bit of a self-imposed issue with attaching the intake tube and spray bar in the aquarium. They come with suction cup clips that are meant to suction onto the back of the aquarium to hold the intake tube and spray bar in place and I was stuck in the mindset that they had to be attached to the back wall of the aquarium but I had a fake rock background in the way. So I was planning on positioning them where I wanted and then poking holes through the background to attach the suction cups to the back glass behind the rock background. Needless to say, once I realized that I could just attach the intake tube and spray bar to the sides of the aquarium rather than the back, I felt pretty silly. Doing it that way saved me a lot of headaches and from having to poke holes through my aquarium background. Plus, I actually think it created better circulation through the entire length of the tank this way anyways. After I had the background in place and and the filter all set up, it was time to add the substrate to the aquarium. I wanted only a very fine layer of sand in my aquarium because the deeper your aquarium substrate is, the higher the likelihood is that it's going to be anaerobic at the bottom. That means the substrate is so deep that oxygen can't penetrate through the substrate and the bottom layers of it are anaerobic or lacking oxygen. In that kind of environment, anaerobic bacteria can proliferate. Anaerobic bacteria are not like the beneficial bacteria in your filter media. The beneficial bacteria 
are actually very oxygen loving. So they will only proliferate areas that have a lot of oxygen and water flow through them. But the anaerobic bacteria, those are usually the really, really nasty ones that can cause diseases in your fish. So while a really deep layer of substrate may look really nice in your aquarium, it's actually a health hazard to the fish. I originally bought five bags of this, but after I had put two bags of this substrate in, I realized that was gonna be more than enough. So I only added two 20 pound bags to this aquarium. After all this, it was finally time to fill up the tank with water. All right, so you're supposed to prime the filter by pumping this button a few times before you actually plug it in. So I'm gonna do that. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it is filling up. There's a constant stream of water coming from the tank going into the filter and it's pushing air out from here. It's whistling. It's ready to be plugged in. I like that this canister filter has a UV light included. For me, the reason I wanted it is because this is going to be a nice looking display tank. So I don't want it having any chance of getting green water algae. I want it to look nice and clear, almost like the water is not there, like it's just air. And really the best way to achieve that is by UV sterilizing the water. On the package it said that this UV sterilizer also works to kill bacteria and viruses in the water. Now, I'm sure that's true, but there's so much water and such a small UV light that it's never going to kill all of them. So if you do have a UV sterilizer on your aquarium, just remember not to rely on it. It's really the water changes and keeping up with good water quality that's going to keep your fish healthy, not a UV sterilizer. I'm getting two small heaters for this tank instead of one big heater because in case one of the heaters fails, I want to make sure that at least one of them may still be working. So this tank is going to get two heaters, one on each side of the tank. My light just got delayed. Delivered. I like that it's LED because it's gonna be a bit more energy efficient. So I think this is gonna be great. Let's try it out. I have it on my favorite light setting now, which is mode one with the highest white light intensity. And then I turn on the blue lights just enough so that they are on their lowest intensity. So it just adds a little bit of a blue tinge to the white light. I'm really surprised by how tiny this light strip was. When you're back from the tank a ways, you almost can't even tell there's a light on it. So it's kind of like, it's just illuminating itself. And I'm not adding live plants to this tank. It's just gonna be a hardscape only tank. So I really don't need a super high intensity light. The driftwood has now been soaking out here for a few days. So I'm gonna say that we're gonna be done soaking. I just kind of played with the arrangement of the driftwood until I got something I was happy with. I still might end up tweaking it a little bit, but for now, I kind of like this arrangement. You guys might remember that before this piece of driftwood was actually sticking up out of the tank a little bit. I wanted it that way because I recently saw a pretty cool video on YouTube from ADG Vibe and it had a hardscape kind of like this and then it had the wood sticking out on the top, but it was a rimless aquarium, which is why it looked so cool. My aquarium is not a rimless aquarium, unfortunately. I wanted to get one, but it was like almost three times as expensive. So I just went with this. It didn't look quite as good with the driftwood sticking out on the top. And also I couldn't put the glass top on it with the driftwood sticking out. And I really just would rather have the top completely covered with my goldfish, I'm not so concerned about having the top covered because I've never had a goldfish jump out of a tank before or even come close to doing so. But I'm not so sure that the fish I'm getting are 
quite the same way so I'd rather play it safe and just have the whole top covered so what I did was take the wood back out of the aquarium and cut it to where I wanted it to be cut you also might notice that the water is super brown I think I could have soaked the wood for a lot longer than I did but I kind of expected this to happen and I don't really mind that much I'll just do water changes until it goes away look at this I'm doing water changes and I haven't even gotten the fish yet there's something wrong here <laughs> and I also am placing the lids on the top and I have marked the places where I want to cut slots in it for the tube and then also these clips that hold the background in place get in the way too so I'm gonna cut out grooves for those I've made the cuts I have now fully drained the whole tank and I'm gonna fill it back up it's gonna be nice to see it without those brown tannins in there anymore what is this green hook that I'm using you might be wondering well that is the python hook I think it's called all you do is you unscrew the siphon end of your python and then you screw on the hook instead and when you have sand substrate it's really easy to get it all messed up when you're refilling the tank so a really good way to avoid that is just put a plate down underneath where the water is pouring into the tank and it will keep the substrate fairly undisturbed there we go there's the beautiful tank I know and love without the brown water I really want to get some rocks to put like maybe in crevices around the driftwood I think that would look really pretty but other than that I'm pretty much done with the setup of the tank and I guess now the next step is to get my fish some of you may be thinking but you just set this tank up and it's brand new doesn't that mean it's not cycled and it's not safe for fish yet and yes that is true but actually you can take cycled filter media from an established aquariums filter and kind of jumpstart the cycle of a new aquarium for this tank I probably will be stealing some filter media from my 75 gallon aquarium that's out in my fish room and then I will end up putting it in the canister filter and letting it do its thing one other thing this is going to be their permanent home but it's also going to be serving as their quarantine tank I do think it's very important to quarantine new fish for at least four weeks when you first get them so that means keeping them away from your other fish in your established aquariums and making sure also that you don't cross contaminate from the quarantine tank back into your main systems everything that I have for this tank is gonna be its own I have its own buckets I have its own python water changer its own scrub brush and net and none of those things are going to be swapped from one tank to another now the reason I can get away with this being their quarantine tank as well as their long-term home is because it doesn't have any other fish in it right now say I had like three fish in here already and I was planning on adding three more at a later date those three new ones that I was adding at a later date would need to be quarantined in a separate system because I wouldn't want to introduce them into my already established system with my already healthy established fish in it but being that this aquarium is totally empty I am not putting any other creatures at risk by introducing brand new fish into it so this is going to be their quarantine area and their long-term home as well some of you guys follow me on snapchat so those of you know that the fish for this aquarium are already here that's right they're already here they're just right over there in the other room but I'm not gonna show you yet <laughs> I'm so mean but I'm not gonna show you until next week because I want to make this a little bit of a series and keep you guys guessing but that's why you gotta follow me on snapchat guys because on snapchat I gave a little preview of the fish shipping box that they came in and the aquarium in addition to the new fish that are going in my 90 gallon aquarium and the two new black arandas that I got at the Koi show which if you missed that and you don't know what I'm talking about yes I finally got arandas finally after about seven years of goldfish keeping I finally got some arandas crazy right so if you missed that check out the video from Tuesday where I went to the Koi show showed you guys the whole experience and at the end I picked out my two 
new Arandas. So anyways, in addition to the new fish for the 90 gallon aquarium and the two new Arandas I got, I also have another new pet that I haven't showed you guys yet, except for on Snapchat. I did do a little preview of them on Snapchat, but I haven't officially showed you guys yet. So that reveal about what those animals are is coming up too. It's not a goldfish, it's something else, and they're out in my fish room right now just waiting to be shown to the world. Well, that's all for this week's update, guys. You're not gonna find out what fish I'm getting in this video. Mm -mm, not gonna happen. Be sure to stay tuned for next week because actually next week, Friday, is gonna be the big reveal. I'm gonna show you guys the unboxing of my new fish for this tank and you're gonna find out what they are and I think you are going to lose your minds. If you really enjoy my videos every week and you're looking for a good way to support me, I have created Solid Gold Membership, which you can find out more about in the link in the description section below. I wanna say a huge thank you to those of you who have already signed up as members. I honestly can't thank you guys enough. It helps me so much to be able to keep Solid Gold going, be able to keep new and exciting content for you guys every single week. So thank you, and if you are interested in becoming a member, just follow the link below. Thanks for watching, guys and until next time, stay gold.